coming with me whether you like it or not. Put me down! You know, Papa, it's too bad there's a storm brewing. Because you could have had a giant auction block built with a big sign on it saying, Clara Vanna for sale. What I want to know is, would you commit yourself for me? Haven't I just been something to hide behind? Someone who was safe and dull. This must have been terrible for you. I'm so ashamed. She was all right when I left her. Get away from it. Seems to know every time you're near And the touch of a breeze Gently stirs all the trees And a bird wants to please my ear The long hot summer so slowly moves along. The Long Hot Summer, brought to you by... What begins here on a hot summer morning ends with a crash of thunder at gunpoint. Because Ben Quick lives by a rule. Know what you want and take it. And what Ben Quick wants is Clara Varner. And Will Varner knows it. Morning, Mr. Tigner. Morning. You'll be my first customer? Mr. Quick, Say, I... Say, would you mind moving this car? I think that truckload of tires is about due. And if you give me the key to this lock, I'll open up. I'm sorry, Mr. Quick, but I, I can't. You what? I can't let you in there. Now, listen to me, Mr. Tigner. You rented this place to me for cash. It's mine till 9 o'clock tonight. Yes, yes, I did. But I had no right to. At least that's what I found out this morning. Not for a sale like yours. I'll give you back your money you here You signed a paper with me. Mr. Quake, it's none of my doing. The bank owned us. The bank? Store. You mean Will Varner? Well, yes. Mr. Varner found out. Now, you listen you... to me. It won't take me but three minutes to get to that corner and back. And when you see me coming, you better have that lock off the door. Because if that man tries to stop me from having this sale, this will be a day no Varner will ever forget. <laughs> like a snake in still water. Well, it's a pleasure to see a man who not only does his business so early in the morning, but in such a warm and friendly fashion. Now, just what is this little visit all about? A truckload of tractor tires I bought, and I'm going to sell right here in Frenchman's Bend. Hmm. For a man who I understand was scraping the bottom of the barrel, you turned entrepreneur mighty fast. I got him for a 40% discount from Ralph LeClaire and Jefferson, and I intend to pass it on to the buyer. 40%? They should go fast, providing you can find a spot to sell them. I'm not going to lie down and roll over just because you clap your hands, Mr. Varner. Every penny I've got, I've got sunk into those tires, and that store down the street is the only decent place around, and I rented it for today. That's where you and I have a slight difference of opinion. I got a contract right here I signed with Mr. Tickner. Mr. Quick, this bank bought that store from Mr. Hap Penfield. And the deed says that it can't be leased or sold to any business that competes with his farm supply store down the block. Now, how come you got in the business of selling tractor tires anyway? I thought you were aiming to be the biggest tomato farmer in the States. I need money to put in a new well. Without a well, I don't have a crop, and you know that. Judy and I got some business upstate this afternoon. I'll see what I can do about taking those tires off your hands. You come see me at my place about nine this evening. Every day, you give me more and more to thank you for, Mr. Varner. And one of these days, real soon, I'm going to start paying you back, in kind. <laughs> What's that all about? We well, he busted in here. I'd say Papa locked horns with the devil. 
Devil's the only one worth locking horns with. All right, Jody. Time to open up a business, and we gotta get going. Hmm, Missy. You're up and about early today. And I see Mr. Charles Pettigrew is waiting outside to bid you a genteel good morning. He already has, partner. Just like the clock goes around, Thanksgiving, Christmas, summer holidays, Mr. Charles Pettigrew returns from college, and the two of you start balling it up. Visiting museums in the morning, reading poetry in the afternoon. I don't see how you stand the pace. Well, I admit, Papa, that Charles hasn't carved out an empire with his bare hands. But in some circles, studying for a PhD is considered quite an accomplishment, even though it has refined his taste. Suppose you state your business, and I'll get on with mine. I came for some money, Pop. Hmm? Well, I told you last night, Faye Johnson and I are driving up to St. Louis. A little shopping we have to do. I'll be back around noon on Saturday. Oh, that, hmm. Cheer up, Papa. Maybe someday I'll have a change of heart. I'll put on a shiny dress and come home with somebody just bristling with your type of masculinity. Tell Jody I said to give you what money you want. Thank you, Papa. Ralph LeClaire. Oh, Ralph, we'll honor here. I want to see you this afternoon concerning some tractor tires you sold to Mr. Ben Quick. I understand you gave him a bargain. Now, Ralph, you can excuse a newcomer like Ben Quick. But those of us who've been around some time are fully aware that you'd never give anything away except a bad cold. And I have a strong suspicion that if I were to examine those tires closely, I'd find out that they were rejects. And Ralph, since you've been walking the hairy edge for some time, it would give me a good deal of pleasure to drag you and those tires through the county courthouse. Unless, of course, you want to buy them back again. A check would be fine, providing it's certified. What? Me, man? Why, Ralph, <laughs> I've never been in better spirits in my life. That's what put me in the mood for this friendly conversation. Mr. Quick, you ought to watch where you're going. I could have killed you. Your daddy got a good start this morning. No reason why you shouldn't finish the job. Well, Mr. Pettigrew. Ben Quick. Saw your picture in the Monday Gazette. Well, nice to meet you, Mr. Quick. I'd like to add my greeting to welcome you home. Thank you. From what I hear around town, your returns made Miss Clara a mighty happy woman. Charles, I just love this place. The grace and dignity and the beautiful things left undisturbed. Just the way it was a hundred years ago. Well, most people say I'm fighting the 20th century. Charles. Well, there's no getting around the fact that when my father was alive, our land was productive, paying its own way. <laughs> I've just never seemed able to get in. Step with progress. I've always preferred the quiet life of college. And coming back here to the peace of this place, the solitude. Now you're working on a doctorate. That's nothing to be ashamed of. The day I get it, what then? Well, I suppose I should come back here and help Mother sell this land, uh, put it in corn and cotton and get a job like everybody else. But I wouldn't be any good at it. I'd hate it and I'd make a mess of it. Then don't do it. There are enough hustlers around here as is. You stand for something, Charles. Hold on to it. Your father refers to me as decayed gentry. <laughs> well, he's positively green with envy. He'd give anything to have what you have. Your shine, polish. 
Oh, yes. He puts up the billboards and the pulp mills and the neon signs, but quality is one thing he can't buy, and he knows it. He has quality in you. Thank you. That's what I came through this dusty summer day to hear. I'm glad you're back, Charles. You know, girls get um, talked about and fidgety and looked at sideways when they don't have any gentleman callers. You could have all the callers you want. I said gentleman callers. Ah, which brings me to tonight. Listen, Jody and Papa are going to be away late on business, and I want you to come to supper. I'll fix it myself. Well, there's an invitation no man in his right senses would turn down. Good. Seven? Yes, seven. Good evening. Mr. Varner asked me to come out at nine. Oh, yes, sir. He called a little while ago. Said he was running late. Oh. You, uh, care to come inside and wait in the parlor? Well, that's mighty kind of you, Andrew, but, uh, when I sit in that parlor, it's at Mr. Varner's invitation. I'll just get some of this night air. All right, sir. Evening, Clara. Listen, it's early yet. Wouldn't you like to sit by the pool for a while? Yes, I'd like to, but my well, mother wasn't feeling too well when I left, so I guess I'd better be getting home. Of course. Good night, Clara. Good night, Charles. a kiss that would stir a woman's blood. You didn't have to come all the way out here to listen, Mr. Quick. I would have been happy to give you a report. Well, I, I came out to see your daddy, Miss Clare. I wasn't just listening, I was watching. Always willing to learn something new about good breeding. Well, you couldn't have picked a better example than Mr. Charles Pettigrew. I'm aware of that, Miss Clare. He's a fine, educated man. And I envy him what he knows about books. But... Oh, do go on, Mr. Quick. I was just about to ask why a pretty woman like you would try to start a fire with wet wood. And just like all of us, you got your ration of love. What are you going to do with it? Just throw it away? You know what you remind me of right now? What? Frenchman's Bend on Saturday night. When a girl walks down the street and all the young males stare at her with their wise street corner eyes. Well, Miss Clara, when a man sees a pretty woman, he just naturally gets that look. Oh, really? Mm hmm Then I suggest you save it for when it's liable to do you some good. Miss Clara, never try to outguess fate. Take now, for instance. Your eyes are taking on that soft glow of a faraway fire. Here's a check for you. Certified. Ralph LeClaire will pick up those tractor tires tomorrow. Thanks for nothing. Look, boy, I did you a favor. You got out of your lead today. Those tires were rejects. If you'd have tried to sell them, you'd have gotten yourself in a heap of trouble. It's enough of the tall stories. I know what you had in mind. Keep me from making a profit. And you saw to it I got my money back just to soothe your conscience. Believe anything you want. But from now on, I suggest you stick to string and fence and plant and seed. Well, thank you very much for showing this poor redneck farmer boy where he belongs. I appreciate such favors. And as I said this morning, I intend to pay him back. 
and in full measure. I enjoyed the conversation, Miss Claire. We'll have to do it again real soon. From one end of the seesaw to the other. Now what is that supposed to mean? Today it was that wet rag of a Charles Pettigrew. Tonight, Missy, I don't want to see any more of what I just saw between you and Ben Quick. Is that clear? I don't think it means anything, Papa. Jody, you've got to put a lot more mileage in this life before you understand what makes the world go round. Sometimes I can see the hate seeping out of that boy like smoke. He'd do anything he could to get back at me. Well, what's that got to do with Clara? Men like Ben Quick have a curious, twisted form of vitality that some females see as a kind of unvarnished charm. Well, Clara would never think of doing I'm not going to give her a chance to think. Or Ben Quick time to act. Women are very complicated human beings. Sometimes they behave like moths in a windstorm, fly in this direction and that. When that happens, somebody they love has got to step in and straighten them out. And that's what we're going to do, Jody. That's exactly what we're going to do. Starting first thing tomorrow morning. Come on. That's fine, Colonel. About time Clara and your boys started socializing again. You know, once it comes on summer, these young folks really start baying at the moon. Yeah. You never can tell. Some Sunday, we're liable to sit across the table from each other and start calling each other family. <laughs> My thinking exactly, Colonel. Right. Well, you tell George we'll be expecting them Saturday night around 8 then. Thank you, Colonel. There you are. Colonel Taswell says his boy will be here with bills on. Papa, how can you talk to the Colonel like that when you know how Clara feels about George Taswell? She says he's got so much wolf in him that you can almost see his claws and fangs. That's not exactly a charge you could be proven innocent of or any other man worth his salt. We're going to expose Clara to some real men for a change. Those flowers grow on the parlor table. All set for tonight, Andrew? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnum. The way everybody's pitched in, these folks are going to think we've been preparing for this party for three weeks instead of three days. <laughs> Clara, honey. Hello, Papa. Welcome home. I tell you, with you gone, this house has been like the bank on Sunday. Thank you, Papa. Well, it looks like things are livening up some, though. Well, we're having a little hold down tonight. You know, one of those things a man in my position is expected to do now and then. When you wheel and deal, sometimes you've got to set it to music, business associates, that kind of thing. Oh, really? Well, now, most of your business associates that I'm familiar with would prefer a, a rocking chair to a dance floor. Well, I saw no reason not to combine business with pleasure. Jody and I invited some of your friends, too. Call it a welcome home party from St. Louis. Why, how nice, Papa. Oh, I better call Miss Merkel and have my hair done. That's too bad to pick tonight for our mutual entertainment. The weather forecast said rain. It won't rain. No, I guess it wouldn't dare. No rain, you hear? You just gonna watch? You give him some thought to dancing with one of those pretty girls. Another one of these, and I'm just liable to give it a whirl. <laughs> Notice Colonel Taswell's boy and Clara seem to be hitting it off mighty well. Mm. At that 
age, you never can tell where the sparks might fly. Excuse me. Of course. Everything all right, Papa? Well, I could say I'm a mite relieved. The sister came stomping home from Miss Merkel's like the sky was going to fall down. But now she seems to be having the time of her life. Hard woman to understand. Just like a mother. Been a long, strange silence between us, Clara. I sure am glad you decided to end it. Hiya, George. Because just because I haven't been seeing you doesn't mean I haven't been keeping tabs on you, you know. My, my, I'm flattered. Well, never let it be said that old George Taswell is not a thorough man. <laughs> See, the way I figure it, no one enough, I'll never be mousetrapped if the opposition tries to gain yardage. But then, I guess I don't have to worry about the opposition much anymore, now do I? What are you talking about? Same thing our daddies were talking about. Us. Oh, come on now, Claire. We both know why this party is being given. Hey, why don't I go out and uh, get us a few fingers of your daddy's tarantula juice, then we sneak out in the porch and uh, grab us a bolt of lightning and listen to the thunder. We'll huh? talk about it later. Excuse me. Well, Papa, you did it. You really did it. From the looks of it, there isn't an eligible young man from here to the state line who didn't come running when you whistled. You should be very proud of me, Papa. I didn't leave the dance floor once. I gave everyone a sample, even George Tadswell. Now, Clara, just a minute. You know, Papa, it's too bad there's a storm brewing. Or else you could have had a giant auction block built right outside with a big sign on it saying, Clara Bonner for sale. Now see here, Missy. That is what you had in mind, isn't it, Papa? You are pushing Charles Tadswell, aren't you? And what are the others, window dressing? Oh, yes, there's the Ryan twins, and the, yes, Mr. Borden, and Mr. Loring, and how many others? It seems to me the eligibles outnumber your business associates about three to one. All right. So I wanted to see you start socializing with some real men for change. Papa, I would like to know your idea of a man. It must be something special. It is special. A man, Missy, a real man, is a very special quality of human being. Red-blooded, muscled, someone a woman can feel right across a room. The only thing I feel in there is disgust. Miss Clara, Mr. Pettigrew just arrived. Thank you, Andrew. Well, Papa, it seems there was only one young man you overlooked. I've corrected your social error. Good evening, Mr. Pettigrew. Good evening, Andrew. Oh, Charles, I'm so glad you're here. Let's go outside. I know this must seem strange to you, this last-minute invitation, and, and now I'm dragging you out here. Clara, what's wrong? Tell me. Well, there's nothing to tell. It's something to ask. Then ask. Well, you know, the last three years, we've been coming home during the summer. We've seen a lot of each other. We've gone out on rides and, and, and picnics. And we've talked quite a bit, haven't we? You're a stimulating person. I've, I've enjoyed our talks. That's one of the reasons I'm so fond of you. Well, I'm not asking if you're fond of me. What I want to know is, would you commit yourself for me? You want to know if, if I'd marry you, is that it? You know I would if, if you needed me. What would you want me, as a man wants a woman? Clara, I'd, I'd always want to help you. That's a pitiful answer. Don't you think I know it? Clara, I haven't meant to, to waste your time. But you were so sweet, so sensitive, so intelligent. And has it been so different with you? Haven't I just been something to hide behind someone who was safe and dull? This must have been terrible for you. So ashamed. Clara? Clara, don't leave like this. Please, Charles, go back inside. Where are you going?
windshield wipers are broken. Can you fix them? Sure, give it a try, Miss Clara. Thanks. I'll wait inside. All right. Good evening, Miss Clara. Going out of refreshments at your place, Miss Clara? Wouldn't doubt it by the way things looked when I passed by. Some part of your daddy's thrown. Mrs. Burke, may I have a whiskey? Straight? That straight stuff doesn't go down easy unless you're used to it. used to it. Thank you. What's wrong, Miss Clara? Why'd you leave your party? I'd like it very much if you left me alone, Mr. Quick. Well, I didn't get that impression when you came in. It seemed to me you were started from my table. Had you come out here to see me? Now, how would I have known you were here? Hmm. Common knowledge. People of my social station always spend their Saturday evenings at Andy Burke's place. It's kind of a pattern. I myself, I get my uh, supplies, come in here, fill up my glass, hold my breath, and let nature take its course. I uh, just thought maybe things were getting dull over at your place. I was merely out from a dryer, and my windshield wipe is stuck. Well, Harry's garage is across the road. Harry's a mechanic. Andy Burke just serves gas. Are you trying to imply something, Mr. Quick? No. Forget it. It's a bad night to be out driving this, Claire. Maybe you better go back home. I'll go up, please. brought it on, but you're all stirred up. Left alone, you might get into trouble. That's been quick, just as much as kidnapped, Miss Cliff. If Will Varner ever knew about this, he'd cut Ben Quick up into little pieces. And who says he won't know about it? The way Will watches over that girl, I, I think he'd be mighty appreciative if uh, somebody to give him a call. The long, hot summer will continue following station identification. Varney residence. Varney residence. Hello? Who? Mr. Rudabaugh. You want Mr. Varner? My what? Hello? Hello? I'd like to know why you're taking me on this country road. To give you time to cool off. I appreciate your interest, Mr. Quick, but I wish you'd mind your own business. All right, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll take you back home. I'll let you get on with your dancing, whatever else your daddy had in mind. Well, suppose I don't want to go back home. You're going anyway. I'm not going to let you ride around a night like this, especially when you're all steamed up. Just take the Spring Hill turn off here. I said I don't want to go back. <laughs> Of all the stupid things to do.
I guess I should have minded my own business. What is it? We're axle deep in mud, that's what. Well, what are you going to do? You tell me. Andy Burke has a tow truck. I'm not going to trade four miles down that road in this storm. Well, we just can't stand here. Well, that's my thought exactly. There's a deserted shack over there in that field. I'm not going to any shack with you. Look, Clara, there's nobody going to come down this road all night. You're soaking wet. You stay out here, you're going to get pneumonia. Look, you do what you want to do, and I'll do the same. You're coming with me whether you like it or not. Put me down. You act like a little girl, you're going to get treated like a little girl. Now get those groceries. Awful. Forgive the appearance of the place. They weren't expecting company. <laughs> Don't just stand there. Do something. Miss Claire, this is not the Barnum Mansion. There are no boys around to do all the jobs that have to be done. Why don't you make yourself useful and gather up some paper? Plans. What do you get? Storm, a rambunctious woman, uh, car in the ditch, wet to the skin. I wish you'd stop muttering. What are you doing? I'm taking my wet clothes off. You better do the same. I thank you for your concern, but I'm just fine. Now, look, I don't intend to take you home to a sick bed. Are you going to take those clothes off, or do I take them off for you? I'm not going to get undressed in front of you. Go in that room and change and wrap yourself in this. Now, look, Miss Clara, I am a man, but I'm a cold, hungry, wet man. And the only thing that's going to give me pleasure right now is to be far away from here and you. Is that clear? covered the line with static. Couldn't get back through to you till now. All Andrew could get was something about Clara. What? Who? I'll be right there. Plan to pay you back in full measure. Papa, what is it? That's what he said to me, wasn't it? Isn't that what Mr. Ben Quick said the other night? Clara, I'll go with you. You stay here and take care of the guests. I'll handle this. Nothing like being cold and wet to make a man appreciate feeling warm and dry. Well, we don't have any palm trees or coconuts, but it looks like we're going to go native anyway. Might he be coming? Ever seen a woman look so attractive in sackcloth? Uh, since I got my supplies with me, might as well make the most of it and have a little fireside supper. Help redeem my Saturday night. 
All right, what do we got here? We have a little cheese, cold meat, got some crackers, and jar of pickles, and some sunshine for the tummy. Very cheering. I suppose you're looking forward to a cozy evening, hmm? Miss Claire, you've got a bad habit. You slam a door in a man's face before he even knocks. But life's full of salesmanship. You might buy something yet. Why'd you let him take her? Why didn't you stop him? Well, I, I tried to stop him, Mr. Will, but he just skidded out of here all before right, we could get my right. hands on him. excuses. Radio says the bridge of the pike washed out over an hour ago. That means he must be on one of the farm roads. Clint, you take the one to the south. Sam, you go north. I'll cover the county road. All right, come on. Uh, hello. Uh, no, it's the sheriff's office. I'm trying to get the sheriff's office. Miss Carter, that line's out again. Can't get the sheriff's office no way at all. Then that places things squarely up to me. Mr. Pettigrew wouldn't approve of this. Now, come on, sit down, will you please? I don't want you to get me wrong, Miss Claire. I admire Mr. Pettigrew's manners, his speech, the big house he lives in. But in my humble opinion, if you're planning your whole life around him, you've got your account in the wrong bank. Tonight, your party, what happened? All right, let me guess. Your daddy tried once too often to line you up with a husband. I got sick and tired of being a piece of property. Sick and tired of being put on display, sized up and weighed. Well, congratulations. It's a giant step. You're angry enough now to realize there's some things a woman's got to decide for herself. I'll drink a toast to that. Storm's letting up. Well, can't say that's good news for me. I've enjoyed your company. Seeing you across the table there looking so plain and pretty. I had to fight just to keep from walking around and kissing you. Look, Mr. Craig, 
I've spent my whole life around a man who pushed and shoved and thought he could make anything happen just by being aggressive. Well, I'm not about to add another one to my list. Is it really that you don't take to aggressive men? Or is it just that you're afraid you might take to one too well? Mr. Quick, I'm not some uh, trembling little rabbit full of smoldering desires. I've known what it is to love. There was someone once. Still love him? No. Just because you were hurt once doesn't mean you shouldn't reach out again. Don't look for perfection in love. Love's not that way. No more than the fields are always beautiful and abundant. There's the winter cold, the spring mud, dirt, failure. And just when your hands and your heart are sick with work, the joy of harvest. No, it's not enough. It's not nearly enough. I'm someone who's got an awful lot to give. Things like love and affection and devotion and understanding. And I'm not just going to give them away. I'm prepared to be the best wife anyone could hope for. I know that. Let me tell you something. It may not be tomorrow or this year or even next. One of these days it's going to happen. And when it does, it's going to be you and me. Yeah, probably end up your daddy giving us the biggest, most vulgar wedding this party's ever seen. Never. You're too much like him to suit me. Oh, yeah. They'll say there goes poor Clara Varner. Married off to that shiftless Ben Quick. You just let him talk. I'm telling you, you wake up morning smiling. You know, Clara, my daddy used to say something to me. He used to say, morning would never come if the rooster out in the backyard didn't call for it. It's that way with you. You're still stumbling around in that dark, dark night. Afraid to give the one call it'll bring the morning. Think about that. Think about it real good. Some of my friends. Good. You can help me with Miss Clara's car. We got stuck in the mud. Never mind about the car. Where is she? Where's my daughter? Oh, she's waiting in a shack over there across the field. We went over there to get dried out. Well, don't worry. She's all right. She better be. Yeah, she sure better be. What is all this? Get moving, boy. I want to see my daughter. Clara! 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 She was all right when I left her. 
Get away from her. Let's get her outside. Sure, Mr. Wheel. You had yourself a real nice party, Mr. Quick. Yes, sir. A real fine party. Get him off me! Get him off me! Get him off! Leave him alone. I'll take care, Mr. Quick. Finally, go back to town. Tell Dr. Clark, meet us at the house. Right. The rest of you wait outside. You just holler if you need any help, Mr. Will. There's very little God gave me to love in this world. But any man who hurts that better start counting his time. Now, you tell me just what happened here tonight. Nothing. You're lying. You've been looking for a way to get back at me. Papa? Papa? Clara, honey. What are you doing with that gun? I'm going to settle with Mr. Ben quick. He hurt you. He didn't. I fell and hit my head. Papa, you've got to believe me. He didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Get her to the doctor now? She's all right. And nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing wrong? You'll be there shortly. Morning, Mr. Varner. Good morning. I, uh, planned to come by the bank later on. I found out those tractor tires were rejects. Guess you did me a favor after all. How's Miss Clara? She's resting well. Because some of the things she says don't make sense. Roosters, crowing. Well, they always do. Sun coming up. Be a sad world if it didn't. And then she keeps talking about you calling in the morning, and she wouldn't listen. Now that makes no sense at all. Well, I guess a man never was meant to understand everything about a woman. Is that all you got to tell me? Well, no. It's ten o'clock in the morning, Mr. Varner. That's banking hours. Guess we both better get on with our work. And now, scenes from the next episode of The Long Hot Summer. Just don't be swayed by your instincts. Not just now, when you're getting started. I mean, your, your farm is coming along, and your partnership in the lumber mill, and you'll need the goodwill of, of the people. Clara, thank you for worrying about me, but there's no reason to. How many more came with you? You mind pointing my rifle somewhere else?
Hot Summer has been brought to you by...